I'm sorry, I don't, I could not remember Do I share screen. Yeah, I did. The green line represents the transition where over here is known as plastic. And on the left hand side is elastic. And this is for the brittle material. And there are two points of interest. One over here is stress uh, yield for brittle material. And the other one over there is stress ultimate for brittle material. Two points. And as you can see, what you realize that for brittle material, right, for brittle material, what you the stress you brittle is approximately equal to stress ultimate brittle. Okay. So I will define stress y brittle. So this is the u, and then you have stress u beta. The u determines the ultimate. So you can see that now. Okay. So it's fair that for brittle material, right? When you calculate factor of safety, right? When you use stress U divided by stress allowable, it's approximately to, approximately equal to ultimate divided by stress allowable, and this is true for brittle material. Okay, true for brittle material. So for brittle material, it's okay to use the what? The ultimate strength. Be clear. Okay, now I want you to look at the context of ductile material. Now. What happens? If you look at ductile material, is the U strength and the ultimate strength very similar? Yes or no? It is not, right? So I will, I, will, I, will, I will draw again, right? So I will, I will, I'll put in another page. Okay. So next we are going to look at the ductile one. So if we were to focus on the ductile material now, we have a transition line. Where on the right hand side is plastic. And the left hand side is your what? Elastic. And what you can see over here. This is your stress U for duct, uh, ductile. And over here, this is your stress ultimate for what? Ductile material. So you can see that it's very different now. What you can see for ductile material, right? The stress uh, U ductile is a lot smaller than the stress ultimate ductile. Okay. Where stress Y ductile, so this is your U, and likewise your stress U ductile, this is your ultimate. So for this, for ductile material, you have to be very, very what? Careful. So over here, for ductile material, the factor of safety must be equal to stress yield divided by stress allowable. 
and is not equal, not not equal, cannot use. Factor of safety is good stress ultimate over stress allowable. Are we clear? Don't embarrass me when you go to industry, you don't know which one to use. I'll come after you. Are we clear? Okay. Any questions so far? Yes. You don't calculate, you measure. Okay. Does not matter, it's a machine should set up. I think your lab will do it. It's just one setup you do to elastic, then you go to plastic. It's not difficult. Okay, right. The next thing, if you look at this question now, hey. Hey, listen, I'm not here to stress you out, okay? I still love you guys, okay? Don't be so stressed out. Relax, okay? It's fun, okay? I, 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 I guarantee you, okay? But it's a lot of information. The next thing is what? The material have a used strength of what? 200 megapascal. To us engineers, especially mechanical, we really don't care how it is measured, do we? We don't. That's the value for us. I'm going to use it. Boom, boom. I calculate my factor of safety. I should get my pint of beer after that. No. We have to know how this is measured. Okay. How it is measured is critical. So if you look at uh, if you look at the table regarding material property. Okay, so this is the table now. So I'm just going to focus on steel. Okay. So now you can see, as you can see over here, now all of you, you have to be very familiar with tables like this before you do your co-op. Are we clear? Okay, or if your co-op happen to have structure analysis, you need to know how to use this and you need to know how to defend why and how you are using these values, important. First column, is the grade of steel. I'm just focusing on steel. Then you have the density. Then after that, you have the what? Ultimate what? Strength. Yes or no? After the ultimate strength, you, have, you can see the what? U strength. Most of, if you, if you look at both cases, right? This is a ductile material. You can see the what? The U strength is lower than the what? Ultimate strength, yes or no? Now, question for you. If you're going to determine factor of safety, what will you use? U strength. Are we clear? Right, you can see the difference now, right? Now, if you look at the column under ultimate strength, you see tension, you see compression, and then you see what? Shear. Anyone want to make a comment on that? Say something. No, too complex. If you look at the optimal strength, someone need to comment for me. Tension, compression, and shear. What can you see? Look at the columns. Come on, don't be shy. Come on, engineers. Come on, come on. I'm not training you as students trying to become engineers. I'm treating all of you like engineers now. Come on. I know two years later, then you graduate, or three years later, don't really care. I'm going to treat you like engineers now. Come on. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Why? Huh? What about money? Don't talk to me about money. Talk to me about fundamental stuff. Why tension? You have so many data, compression and shear, you have nothing. Likewise for the what? For the yield. Tension, you have so much data, here you have a few. Why? Yes.
Yes, most of the time, the simplest way to carry out this test is in what? It's in tension. 95% of the test will be carried out in what? In tension. Now, let me ask you a question. If you were to calculate a stress state and it's in compression, what do you do? Look for the next guy further up who is my boss and ask him. No, you are the next guy up. There's no one, there's no other guy know this better except what? You. Are we clear? So why a lot of data are in tension? Because the test is carried out most frequently. Okay. Now, tests are all carried out in three individual unique configuration. I think this has been taught in 3C. I'm going to do a bit of it again, okay? So test, okay, mechanical testing. I carried out in, okay? So it can be in what? Intention. So intention, this is your specimen. And what I'm going to sketch down here, this is your centroid. And what's going to apply over here, and this is going to be P prime, and this is your couple P prime, both in what? You can see the direction. So this is intention, OK? I'm going to introduce to you an element now. Okay, I'm, I'm going to put an element in. How many of you have completed 3CO3? You all remember what's an element now? Some of you like, Eugene, not a freaking clue. It's fine. I'll do it again. Okay. So we're going to place an element over here. Okay. So I'm going to place an element. And all this share a transformation where this direction is our x, uh, this direction is our y, and if I will apply right hand rule, this direction is our z. Okay. And then from here, the test also can be carried out in what? Compression. Okay, so this compression, again, this is your test specimen. And when you do compression, I'm going to draw a centroid. And then this is how we help your test in compression. And then I'm going to sketch out an element for all of you again. We have another element. Okay, that's our element. So the element is, in fact, you can put a strain gauge there also. Okay, so strain gauges is when you change the length, it change in potential difference, and you have a change in voltage that you can relate to strain, and strain you can relate to stress. So the test can be done in compression, in tension, and lastly, we can do this in shear. Okay, so shear, what happens in shear, probably all of you have seen this before, is as good as putting it in torsion. So in shear, this is how the thing is applied. P prime, T, so T is the torque. And then I'm going to draw our element. Okay, that's our element. So all the tests are either done in tension or is done in compression or is done in what? Sh 